this is an interesting proof that makes use of two lines for ampersand twice and also illustrates the repetition shortcut rule. Well, at this point, I assume that we understand the basics, so let's just jump in and get started. We want to work top down first and accomplish everything that we can. We see that line 1 has an ampersand as its main connective, so let me write A ampersand M arrow B on one line, T arrow S on another line, both justified by one ampersand out. All right, I could check off line 1. 2 is uninteresting. Line 3 has an arrow as its main connective, so if I could add A and M, then I could write B. Well, there's an M, but I don't have an A any place. Line 4, if I had T, then I could write S. Yeah, but I don't have a T. All right, I've done exactly the thinking that I needed to do at the top, and it just tells me that I'm stuck up there. When you're stuck at the top, you go to the bottom and always your first thought when you go to the bottom is to identify the main connective. Hopefully it's obvious that it's this first ampersand. It's the only thing completely outside parentheses. Well since the ampersand is the main connective, that tells us what to do bottom up. What we're trying to do is build a method that will tell us look at the main connective and here's what you ought to do. If this had been an arrow, we would make a box and do arrow in. But since it's an ampersand, life is even simpler. All we have to do is break this up into the two pieces that we will need to prove, namely A arrow B, everything in front of the ampersand, and then T arrow S, ampersand G arrow M on the bottom. First one in the middle, second one in the bottom. Why in those two places? Well, in effect, what we're doing is saying we have to do two proofs. We have to prove A arrow B. Well, here's the space to do that. Then we have to prove T arrow S and G arrow M. Here's the space to do that. We have finished two lines for ampersand. This is all that it is. No line numbers, no justifications. We're just breaking up the conclusion into two halves. Okay, the next step is to try to prove A arrow B. Okay, that's what we have to do now is prove these things. It has an arrow as its main connective. Well, that tells us to do arrow in. So we should make a box up above it. Box up above it, and we immediately know what goes at the top and the bottom of that box. That's why we make four-sided boxes. A to B justification for the first line of every box is a PA. We're doing this for the rule arrow in, so that, let's put that in parentheses. Of course, the top line will be the next number in your proof. That's line 5. Once you've set up a box, your attention just goes back up to the top and you do all the top-down stuff you can. Is there anything we can do up here top-down? Well, M still uninteresting. Line 3. If I had A and M, then I could write B. Oh, I actually have an M and an A. So line 3 is going to inspire me to put those together. A ampersand M, 2, 5 ampersand N. And I know exactly why I did this, so I could do arrow out and get B. But B is the conclusion that I'm after right now. And so 3, 6, arrow out, and I have finished the box. I have just proven that if you gave me A, then I could get to B. Or in other words, I have proven that if A, then B. The justification for this, of course, will be 5-7, arrow in, just as a way of referring to this entire box. We're halfway done. We've proved A, arrow B. Now what do we have to do? Well, of course, we have to prove TROS and GROM. What's its main connective? It's an ampersand. So just like we did to get started, we now need to do two lines for ampersand to prove this. 
And so what I'm going to do is pencil in T arrow S and G arrow M. T arrow S goes in the middle of the space. G arrow M goes at the bottom of the space. Now I've left myself space to prove these. Not so much, but you know, enough. And that's my job. Although here's a really important and interesting thing. I call this strategy two lines for ampersand because we need two things to build this ampersand. But what do you notice about TROS up above? It already exists on line four. And since it already exists, we really don't have to prove it again. I could make a box above this and I could prove it. And it would be really easy because of the fact that I already had it. But there's actually no reason to do this. In fact, at this point, you should get out your eraser and delete that line. And you should say, well, look, all I really need to do is prove the GROM. Once I've proved GROM, then I can use line 4 plus this line here, and I will have finite, and I'll be able to justify this ampersand with 4 plus whatever this is. So again, it's called two lines for ampersand, but you don't absolutely have to have you don't absolutely have to prove both lines if you already had them. Whoops, I'm making mistakes over here off to the side with my pencil. Okay, there we go. I think it's ready. Whoops. Now how did that come back? All right. Behave yourself, computer. And now there we go, a working pencil. Now it is my goal to prove GROM. So what I'm going to do is make a box up above it. And of course we know at the top of this box goes G, at the bottom of the box goes M. Line 9, PA for arrow in, and we're back up to the top doing everything that we can. Could I do ampersand out and get this M that I need out of line 6? Nope. It's important to remember that this box is now off limits because you can never use a line from inside of a box to justify anything down below it. So especially when you have a box on top of a box, this is something to be very careful about. All right, well, we can't use 5 through 7. Where are we going to get this M? Well, in fact, the obvious place is from line 2. Indeed, this is sometimes, this is, this is a sort of thing which is so simple that it seems a little peculiar. I have M on line 2. I just need to get it to show up at the bottom of this box. Now, the truth is there are several different ways that you could do it. One thing that you could do is you could say, let me do ampersand in with line 2 and for instance line 9 and then you could write G ampersand M on line 10 and then you could turn around and do ampersand out and get the M back out of what you just built. I think that that's kind of an ornate thing to do and I'm not very fond of it but it's just a trick for moving things around. I think the better thing to do is to give ourselves a new rule at this point namely the rule that I call repetition, and we will abbreviate just with a capital R, and it's a really incredibly simple rule. It looks like this. If you have P on one line in your proof, well, you can have P on another line. This is an easy and intuitive and obvious thing that sometimes we just want to do it. So if we use this rule, we just look up here and say, look, we have M on line 2. Let's just call this repetition on 2. And now we've finished the box. It's so simple it looks a little peculiar. But we now have shown that G leads to M. Thus we have finished this box. And on line 11 we'll call this 9 through 10 arrow in. And at this point we have finished the proof. All we have to do is write justifications for 12 and 13. What's 12 going to be? Well, 
Remember we said that when it comes time to justify this, we'll use line 4 up here plus the GROM which we proved. So we'll say 4 comma 11 ampersand in. And then the 413? Well, that's obviously A or B. Aha, that's line 8 plus 12. These are the two things we penciled in for our first two lines for ampersand. And so over here we're going to write 8 comma 12 ampersand in. And we're done. Any questions? Well, I hope not because I can't hear you. Um, good luck with the studying.